Hi, welcome back to the Praxis Test Prep channel. My name is Tasha. I'm a former high school biology teacher, and today I'm going to walk you through some practice problems for the Praxis 5025 exam. This is part of the early childhood science portion of this exam, specifically engineering, technology, and the applications of science. Okay, let's get started. Okay, question one. In a fifth grade classroom, students are studying the life cycle of plants. Which of the following digital tools would be most effective for the teacher to use in order to facilitate a student-led investigation into the growth stages of a bean plant? So we're looking specifically for the growth stages of a bean plant. The first one, an interactive whiteboard to display a time-lapse video of a bean plant growing. So we are seeing those growth stages. A word processing software to type out the names of the different growth stages. A calculator to determine the height of the bean plant at each stage. We don't really use a calculator to calculate that. Um, D and E book reader to access fictional stories about plants. So that doesn't really have to do with growth stages of plants. So we're left with these two, A and B. They are both um, they are both interactive tools, but A would be the most likely one because that is the most interactive. Okay, question two. Third grade students are participating in a build project to build an egg racer that can travel down a ramp and across a finish line without breaking the egg. The project is intended to teach students about concepts of motion and force. Which of the following steps best illustrates a student's application of the scientific method in finding a solution to keep the egg from breaking? So we are looking at that scientific method, so we need to find one of our answers that has that scientific method. A, choosing the smallest egg available to provide more room for cushioning. It doesn't really, it's not really part of the scientific method. Selecting materials that a student feel are sturdy and provide cushioning. While those are great, we're not really using that scientific method either. C, testing different material for cushioning the egg and recording which material best absorb the impact when the racer crosses the finish line. So this is that scientific method. So choosing that material and then recording. D, designing an egg racer that looks like the example from their textbook, not really using that scientific method. So our answer will be C. Question three. Preschool students are engaged in learning about simple machines and the basic principles of mechanics. The project aims to introduce the concept of how forces make, can make work easier. Which of the following active learning activities would best demonstrate the preschooler's understanding of the purpose and function of a simple machine? So we are looking for an active learning and we're looking for simple machines. A, using a lever made from a ruler and a fulcrum to lift a small object. This is where you have that lever and you have that ruler and that fulcrum. This is a simple machine um, and it is an active project and it is appropriate for preschoolers. B, coloring pictures of different types of simple machines, not really an active project. So I would say that that's not the right one. Assembly a, a complex gear system. So this is really not appropriate for a preschooler. If we have anything complex, it's really not appropriate for pre-K. Stacking blocks to create a tall tower. The tall tower, tower is not a simple machine. So our best answer is going to be A, using that lever made from a ruler and a fulcrum to lift a small object. Okay, on to our final question. During a science lesson, second grade students are tasked with the understanding the basics of electricity and circuits. The teacher provides a variety of materials, including batteries, wires, bulbs, and switches. Which of the following student activities best demonstrates the process of building a simple circuit and finding a solution to make a light bulb? So we are looking for a simple circuit and we're wanting that light bulb to illuminate. So A, connecting the battery directly to the light bulb without using wires. This is not a circuit. You're not going to um, maybe even let, have it light up, but you're not using those wires, so it's not a circuit. Using wires to connect a battery to a light bulb and incorporating a switch to control the circuit. That is going to actually be a circuit. Placing a light bulb near the battery in hopes that the light bulb will, will light up due to proximity. Not a circuit. D, shining a flashlight on the light bulb to see if it will turn on. Again, those aren't circuits, so our, our answer will be B, that circuit. I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, head over to study.com for more practice problems and to check out our other videos. As a study.com member, you get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, as well as targeted instruction for some topics you might still be struggling with, along with some test-taking strategies to help you maximize your score on test day. 
Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful. In the comments down below, please let us know if there's any topics you'd like us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!